go to Hail LSU. LSU. <laughs> said it's our year, baby. <laughs> I got all the information. Call me next week. Yeah. <laughs> all right, baby. Boys in the sip. We back. And um, as always, like and subscribe our YouTube channel at uh, Boys in the Sip. And man, good to be back. Have you back? You know, down at the beach on me there for a little bit for Thanksgiving. You felt naked last yeah, week without yep. me. That was discombobulated. Just, just me and Trav here, and you and Austin uh, coming in remote. Uh, but uh, Thanksgiving week, uh, it was a good week. Me yeah. and family eating, um, just good time, and then. You throw in the egg bowl victory, just makes it that much better. No doubt. Yeah, uh, just an awesome time. Got to do, uh, got to go to a, a party. Uh, one of my buddies turned forty, and just see a bunch of friends. Just good times, good vibes, mm -hmm. good for the soul in the Delta. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but let's get into the egg bowl. Just right off, and you know, boring defensive game. Uh, nine straight punts to start the game. Nine straight punts to start the game, and uh, but you know, like I I said on an earlier show, Kiffin's to me where he has adapted and gotten better is just going for the W and coaching how and the game needs to play out how it's going how it's going yeah you know it's like okay i know they can't score you know this is going to be a defensive battle we're just going to rush the ball we're going to wear them down and we're just going to win the game mm -hmm. you know that's you know it didn't start off start off nine straight punts and so that that's one thing that i that i like you know yeah. uh we had i mean it was our rushing to their rushing, our passing, their passing was flip-flopped. Mm -hmm. We got 211 yards rushing, 96 yards passing, and they were around 200 and – What? 207 seven passing, passing and 96 rushing. 96 rushing. Basically 300 yards. Yeah. So, you know, very uh, equal, you know, in total yards. Just they were passing a little more and we, we were rushing the ball. Yeah. And we were rushing it, you know, rushing it well. Uh, Which I think that stat proves to be more important than passing yards is, is controlling the running game. Yeah. You know, if you control clock, you can have longer drives, you possess the ball more, wear them down more versus if you're kind of getting thrown on and they can't run the ball, which they didn't run the ball very good on us. Yeah. I think that ended up kind of being the difference in the game. Obviously, in that penalty. The which penalty. You, you're going to talk about. Yeah. the You know, the game, the way it was playing out, they definitely had, you know, some momentum. Crowd was in it. Their crowd was good. You know, I yeah. didn't we talked about didn't think it was gonna be, you know, on, on Thanksgiving it wasn't gonna be as good, but they they, they showed they up. They showed up. Yep. And they got the momentum. They were loud and, you know, saw that they were gonna be able to compete. And uh that's what those players feed off of. And it was, you know, like I said, it just starts off nine straight punts. It's going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And third quarter they go up. And they go up seven, what? They went up seven three. three. Seven three. Then we go up ten seven. Yeah, but, but it's seven three third quarter. Mm -hmm. Seven minutes and fifty, 50 seconds. Fifty ago. seconds left. Third and eight. Dart runs for the first down. He's trying to get the first down, and um, I forgot. I got his name they right got here. Targeting. Yeah, uh, D Page targeting on Dart, and you know. I mean, I honestly, I'll say the same, you know, even, even being an Ole Miss fan, it's hard, it's, it's a hard call. Yeah. It's like the rule's the rule, but it's like, I mean, it's football. Mm -hmm. And you're going 100 miles an hour. I mean, how – there's got to be something there. Like, if I'm going 100 miles an hour and I'm trying to not, not let him get the first down and, you know, he moves a little this way or whatever and hits in the head – but he did. Yep. You know, so it, it's a penalty. It, it, but and it proved to be a really big penalty. We, we don't know how it turned out if it wasn't a penalty. You know, if, if we would have won or they would have won. But yeah. um, it definitely gave us some momentum. It swung the game. And after that play, after that play, Juckins six rushes, Dart one pass, Bentley one rush. All right, and. Um, 
that just shows you right there. I mean, we go seven rushes, one pass, score. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that kind of just it put the momentum back on us. We kept doing what we were doing on defense and um, got the W and brought the uh, brought the trophy back. And, yeah. And, man, they uh, they were glad to get it back, you could tell. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been weird. It's been a weird year because Kiffin came out and said that he's way more comfortable in a high scoring game. Yeah. And it seems like these two great seasons we've had has been more, like you said, where he adapted in the game. You mm-hmm. could tell that he knew it wasn't going to be a shootout, which he admits he's way more uncomfortable in that situation. But I think it showed his maturity. Yep. And he he's just like, okay, you know, I want it to be a shootout, but it's not. That's right. And we we're not even trying to throw the ball. I don't know what's going on. We didn't throw the ball against Georgia. We didn't throw it against State. I don't know if the offensive line is just that messed up. Yeah. You know, we changed everybody around last week. They were all in, like, different positions, mm-hmm. which clearly we just weren't comfortable throwing. Yeah. Either you know, mean. we haven't consistently thrown. But what we have consistently done is look like we're going to lose all these close games and figure out a way to win them all year long. That's right. I don't know if it's been against great teams besides LSU's pretty good. But that's that shows the character to me of it, Ole Miss's team, and it shows you how important running the ball and rushing is. Yeah, and not turning the ball over, and not turn. There wasn't a turnover the whole game. Yeah, e- either either side. Like I said, the game was. I mean, stat wise, was equal as it gets. Yeah, and uh, it just goes to show you can look so ugly. You don't turn the ball over, and you run it for two hundred yards. You aren't losing a football game. Yeah, it's and, impossible. I mean, it's just it – just, that's the two biggest stats right there. Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan Day talked about it yeah. after the Michigan-Ohio State game. He just said they won the turnover battle and they outrushed us. I hadn't looked at the stats yet, but if you don't win those two, you don't win. It, it just, it's huge. He said, I wish I could make it about more than that, but I just don't think it is. Well, it was uh, – I, I saw – you know, after the game, they were having a good time. They got the stogies out. And, oh yeah, and uh, they were posting some pictures, riding. I guess, I guess Kiffin and uh, Dart and some of them, uh, they got on. I guess a limousine bus or something. And yeah, Knox and uh, they were they were having a time and glad to get that back yeah. back in Oxford. And like you said, you know, uh, were telling me since we lost last year, that was going to give us more yeah. mo- motivation it was I, I didn't think that was any way we weren't gonna have weren't gonna show up like wanting to win really bad yeah even though we had a lot of new players the coach mm-hmm. was like there ain't no way i can lose them two years in a row yeah especially when they're down yeah and we're kind of up huh. that was huge you well know? you know kind of so that kind of gets us uh you know 10 and 2 um and now we're just kind of sitting and waiting. And, you know, great year. One of the best – probably one of the best years we've yeah. ever had. And uh, so now we wait and kind of gets us into these uh, – you know, we got bowl predictions and we got conference games this year – I mean, uh, this weekend. And a lot can happen. Yeah. A lot. So, I mean – I want to rant and rave like, we deserve New Year's Six, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But – if I'm being honest, even though we've had a great year, our two losses are as legit as it can get, you know, I'm not sure how good we really are, if I'm just being honest, yeah. in comparison to these other couple teams we're fighting I against. I don't know if we could beat Missouri right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we could beat Oklahoma right now. I feel like yeah. we're as good as Penn State. I don't know why they're up there. But, you know, if we get left out, we get left out. I just think we can use that as motivation towards next year which I think we're going motivated into next year regardless with the open up playoff system, yeah, new conference, Dart coming back, Kiffin's clearly in. You know, I think we can kind of just stop talking about it yeah. in, a, in a way. Like, he's just – he's here. Yeah. I think it's he's either NFL or Ole Miss. I agree. And it's just – like he came out and said, well, we, this is – why are we even talking about this again? Yeah. Because if somebody doesn't call you, they're stupid. Yeah. First and foremost, yep. you know, I mean, who are you going to call? I mean, you got to call him. Mm-hmm. If you're a big school, you know A&M called him. Yeah. You know, so – but he's clearly in for the long haul. Yeah. Him and Dart back next year is – there you go. 
doesn't even matter. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, well, let's finish, you know, let's, let's finish the year strong and let's get the, let's get us a good bowl win. Mm-hmm. And let's, so right now, uh, let's talk about our prediction, bowl predictions. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm going to talk about mine. You kind of, we'll see where we, where we differ at. All right. Now, this is going based off what I think is going to, you know, happen this week. Mm-hmm. But, I think Georgia's going to beat Alabama. I think it's going to be a good game. So, they're going to be number one. I agree. All right. Michigan's going to beat Iowa. Yep. And so, they're going to be number two. Mm-hmm. All right. Vegas is just saying Oregon is just way better than Washington. Yeah. Remember, I said I mean, two, two weeks ago, I said – I made a side bet with a guy. I said, I, I said Oregon's going to be favored by seven. Yeah. In that game. He goes, dude, are you kidding me? Washington beat them. I said, watch. Now they're ten. I, I – I mean, it, it's kind of blowing my mind with the line mm-hmm. now. I mean, I'm sure it is everybody. Uh, but the I've always said Oregon Las was Vegas. better. It's in Las Vegas. Is it really? They're not giving the game away. Oh, my God. They're, I wish we could They're like, play. come bet your, bet your money on Washington yeah. and good luck. Yeah. I mean, that's well, obvious. That's I, 100% going to be the of, highest lot percentage of on a game. A lot of points. I think Oregon probably going to get the win, but uh, I'm probably not going to mess with it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I think Oregon's going to beat them. So that's going to that's going to bump them up. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to say, I think so the big one's going to be Florida State if they're yeah. going to beat Louisville. Mm-hmm. They're only a two point favorite. I know. So that's the thing. That's the game that's going to shake up. Can shake up this whole thing. Yeah. All right, and so if Florida State beats Louisville, it's going to be you know it's set. You know, first of all, if if ever, if the, all the undefeated teams win, it's set. We know Correct. that. Yeah, we know that. So you got uh, Georgia, Michigan, um, Florida State, and Washington. All yeah. right, but Washington would be Washington's of, three. It would be three. Yeah, and or Oregon. So, the winner of that game's going to three. Yeah, but I think I think it's going to be Georgia is going to play um, Oregon, and I think Michigan is going to play Texas. Who are you going to put if Florida State loses to Louisville and then Oregon wins? I, I mean, mean, Florida I, State's only favored by two and a half over. Yeah, Louisville, I know. and I think that they put them favored to try to get the public. To make to make them think that Florida State's still better, because I think that they're going to get a ton of Louisville money. Even though Louisville just lost to Kentucky, that's a rivalry game. But they had already clinched their spot in the title game. Yeah, and I know that it's kind of crazy to think they were looking ahead in a in a rivalry game. Yeah, but man, they got up twenty four fourteen, and they just Kentucky just didn't quit. And that game just kind of weirdly swung back. That was my play last week. I know. I mean, Louisville's dominate, dominating, dominating. I mean, they look good against Miami. I, I really think they just lost focus. And Kentucky's so freaking tough with Stoops, man. And he's staying. So, I mean, I think I think Louisville may beat them. Yeah. And then, and then again, I mean, Florida State's not the fourth best team not the fourth without best the team. quarterback. Their They're quarterback. really good. Their yes. other players are awesome. I love Mike Norvell. Like love with him. with the quarterback, I would have taken them plus the points in the first playoff game. Yeah, in a heartbeat because they are just stacked up front. They got playmakers. That coach is stud. I've been saying that for years. Yeah, I wanted us to get him. He was at Memphis. Yeah. Oh, I know. We were I begging for begging. him. We were like, please, please, yeah. please. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is a really good coach. So, it's just it's just one of those years where it's just bullshit that there's yeah. a committee. It yeah. seems simple, but the whole purpose is to have the four best teams. Four best teams. So the fifth ranked team on the committee <laughs> is playing the third ranked team on the committee who beat the fifth ranked team and they're catching ten. Like the guys taking millions of dollars of bets know that Oregon's better, but the committee's got them at three. Yeah. So I know they're undefeated. But but the whole purpose of this new system is to get the four best teams. Yeah, I don't think they've done that shit yet. And that's why the twelve team is going to be so much better. Now you're still going to have the you know your ten through fifteen discussion, yeah. but getting your best teams in there 
is is going to be a lot easier. I mean, look right now yeah. at the at the two loss teams. You got notes. It goes Missouri's uh, nine. Yep. Who's ten? Penn State, then us, and then Oklahoma. You got Missouri nine, <laughs> Penn State ten, us eleven, Oklahoma uh, twelve. Well, that's all t- uh, two loss teams. Okay, so if if the three two loss teams ranked ahead of Oklahoma played Oklahoma on a neutral field right now, would Oklahoma not be favored in every game? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So there's another piece of bullshit. Yeah. So now they got to deal with that next year on the back end of the playoff. Yeah. Like like Las Vegas should have something to do with the playoff. I said that to you earlier this year. I wanted to talk about it. When the first rankings came out, I'm like, you know, they got – gambling's legal now. Yeah. They're basically – they got odds makers. They got professional uh, committees, a bunch of people that That's played. Right. They don't know anything about a number and who's actually better in power rankings and all that stuff. You know, but Vegas does. No the doubt. odds makers do. Like, there's got to be some sort of factor to that coming up with all these expanded – deals i mean think about the sec how the hell are you not gonna lose one or two games in the sec yeah now you got it's not it's not gonna be much undefeated football left no you got oregon and washington going into the ohio state michigan conference you know it's 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 not gonna be undefeated teams it, and then there will be undefeated teams in these crappier conferences yeah, like a two right. lane this year was sneaking in and putting putting a two lane or you know, somebody out of these other conferences, you can't put them in the 12 when you got a two or even a three loss. In but you know SEC. they're going to because you know? think when the first playoffs just came out, they were bitching and complaining about getting one of them in and trying to sneak them in. And there was just, it's just nothing but blowouts in the first round of the playoff. Yeah. There's like never good games, even at four. I mean, look Imagine, at last year. Yeah. I mean, it was a joke. Joke. You know, I mean, that's something that's, that needs to be discussed and, and put, some of these big odds makers on the committee, correct, and say we you know we want the, in your opinion, who is better? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, because the either. NFL is black and white. Pro sports is black and white. It's like here's the divisions, here's the way it works. Yeah, boom. Yeah. There's no questions. Then you know, it's a, uh, you know, a work in progress. I understand that, just like NIL and just you know, like transfer portal, but uh, that just you know common sense to me but a lot of people don't have i feel like this year georgia and michigan are have separated themselves in a way but think about it alabama's the eighth ranked team and that's where they probably should be seven or eight whatever so i mean think about the playoff this year you don't think the eight or nine or ten can beat the one or two oh yeah you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so this has been a heck of a year to have it yeah this would have been a good one. It would have been a good one. It proves that it should expand. Would, would we? Uh, but then again, you know, is the regular season even going to matter that much? How much weight do they put on the regular season? Like by them making Oregon five and to where win and you're in. Mm-hmm. That basically just said that y'all losing in the regular season doesn't even matter. Just eliminates that game. Yeah. That, may, that, that means that game did not matter. Whoever would have won that game, they get a chance to play again. So now if they're one and one, Oregon, like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, to me, you know, I agree. It's tough just doing four. So, you know, twelve is going to be better, and then hopefully uh, they can make a few few adjustments. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, what bowl? So so if they win out, you know, if Georgia loses, that's going to be I just what, that's going to be the crazy scenario there. If That's going to be loses. what really shakes it up. Yeah. Because Texas is winning, just like Michigan's winning. You know, it's just yeah. a matter of how much they win by. Yeah. You know, I feel like Florida State, you know, needs to win convincingly not to have a chance for them to get screwed. Yeah. Especially if Alabama beats Georgia. Because how can you sit there and say Florida State's better than Georgia? <laughs> or Ohio State even. I hate Ohio State, and I'm sick of them always getting ranked back in. But it's pretty obvious watching the Michigan game last week, they're one of the top three or four or five teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, Ohio, Florida State can't beat them. No way. Just like I don't think Washington or Oregon could probably beat them, you know. But they're saying that the Pac-12 is the best conference this year by the way they got it stacked. And then they're saying that the Big Ten's better than the SEC because they got 
Ohio State with one loss ahead of Alabama with one loss against Texas, who's ranked in the top seven. Then, then you got uh, Penn State. Penn State, um, they're ten and two and ahead of us. Correct. You know, you go look at their schedule. Penn State schedule is so weak. They're saying that the they Big Ten is better than the SEC this year. But their only big win, Penn State, was uh, looking at it uh, like Wisconsin or something. I mean, they didn't beat anybody. No, it was it was some better. Travis, look up Penn State's uh, schedule and just that one, bit, you know, decent win. Um, but you know, it's going to be this week's going to be it's going to be big. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a good week of college football conference championships. Yeah. This is when we used to go out to to Vegas. Mm-hmm. And so if Alabama beats Georgia, are they 100% in? Yes. They're going to bolt up 100%. From and then they're just going to kick Georgia out kind of like they're doing Michigan Ohio State. Y'all have had y'all's chance, y'all played even though y'all are probably one of the best four teams, y'all are, you're out. I don't know. And then they're going to put Because that, so how do they jump Texas? Who beat them? I don't know. See, man, that could, that's where it could get sick right there. So, Bama wins. They go in. And then I almost think that if that scenario happens, Texas may bump Florida State out. So, I'm showing that the only ranked team they beat was Iowa. Iowa. There you go. That was it. Yeah. Who can't Iowa. score a touchdown. Who's 26-point favorite. I mean, underdog. Or 27-point underdog. They got that one. linebacker for Iowa may be the – he's like – Ray Lewis, one of the best football. He's like Patrick Willis. Never seen somebody control the game so much on the defensive side of the ball in a college football game as that dude does. I mean, their over and unders are sick. 24 and <laughs> like, shit, man. I'm like, nervous. it's the craziest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Dude, Texas is favored by 26 and a half or whatever, and the over and under is like 34. And now you mean the Michigan. I mean, Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Michigan, <laughs> Iowa. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's crazy. I know. I mean, Man, let us correlate parlay that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we broke the uh, – I got a buddy I know that broke the uh, machines. Um, you know how you, you go bet the casinos, and a lot, a lot of them have the machines. Yeah. And uh, this is when it first started. And uh, people don't know what a correlated parlay is. It's taking the, the aside, the favorite, and the over or – vice versa, and parlaying them, mm-hmm. same game. And it, they, they, nobody will let you do it. Yeah. On certain games, games like that, because yeah. the percentage actually flips in your favor. Yep. Well, the, the machines in, around Mississippi didn't, didn't have know. it set, didn't yeah. know. Yeah. And, uh, a buddy of mine figured it out, and he put together a team, and they went and fed every machine that they could in Mississippi. <laughs> I mean, I think they, you know – it almost closed them down yeah but they figured it out and uh but on those correlated parlays so mm-hmm. but that would be a that'd be a good one because most likely if texas covers it's gonna go over you yeah know? michigan you mean i mean michigan i keep saying texas I saw it. my bad <laughs> thanksgiving that's what you got, you got me, me here for buddy you got me all I'm, I'm thinking about this golf game we got a big golf game coming up right after this yeah that's why i'm in my golf clothes get my little hat my, my bull it's my bull uh, cause it's, uh, me and the boys in the SIP got us, uh, a golf match here right after this, uh, at Deerfield and, uh, it's going to be a good one. Yep. It's going to be a good one. So first time I've been out in a while, I'm kind of getting the itch again. So I'm ready to get going, yep. ready to get this golf going. So, uh, beautiful day here and we're going to play at Deerfield. So. I'll carry you. Don't worry. Yeah. So my mind was a little, little kind of thinking about some other things, but, uh, Anyway, you know, we could sit and talk about this scenario of these bowl games. And, uh, you know, it's basically after this week, we'll know. Yeah. You know, and it's fun to talk about it and, and kind of try to figure out and why and what. And we have our opinion. And one of our opinions that I think, like you said, is these odds makers need to be involved. Mm-hmm. So They do. They just they need to if be If they're going to make it fair. Yes. You know, you want the best make it teams. legit. You want the best teams. So, um, what bowl, what scenario do you think puts us in a New Year's Six Bowl? And one thing that hurts that, that they got Louisville in the, uh, 
uh, Orange Bowl because an ACC team has to be in it. Yeah. So, so why is that? They they, they they still have the contracts inside those larger bowl games that with certain conferences that, you know, were certain years long. Yeah. So they have to have a team in that conference in that game. So they're, they're, these things are contracted out and they're still in it. Yeah. Because you got – the, the New Year's Six at large, you got the Fiesta, you got the Orange, the Peach, and the Cotton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're all at large besides uh, the Orange Bowl. Yep. And that's ACC has to be. And then you got Verse, a SEC, a Big Ten, or a Notre Dame. Yep. So that's that hurts us. It does. Because I don't th- think we're that, getting in a New Year's Six. I don't think there's any way. Yeah. They and then you talked about bowls yeah too and i know you were in the middle of grinding your parlay with old miss last week oh, we're you gonna were get like, to that i'm loading against them in the bowl well yeah. i disagree on that one big time yeah i know well, that I, was i it. was you thinking caught New up in the moment. you're caught up in the moment i don't yeah. think it matters where we play yeah but that'll motivate us even more yeah but i think the only weakness we had was within our offensive line and so now we got time to patch that up even if it is newer bodies to where we can run and pass and I just don't think we're going to lose that bowl game against anybody we play. Do we have anybody that, I mean, Judkins, uh, I mean, Dart, I, I think he's, I think we're good there, but like that's not going to play, that might go to the draft? No, I don't think we're going to have any holdouts. I don't think yeah. we're having any transfers. That's what I'm saying. I feel like this is a kind of intact, here we come, build it for next year. That's right. Like, they're going to use all this practice time. They're going to use all this momentum. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to try to use that for a recruiting tool. That's right. See, that's huge, especially with the transfers and the new coaches and stuff. Man, you go style out in that bowl, and they're spreading it around. We're putting all those points out. They know these guys are coming back. Then that's when you go to fill the holes, Mm -hmm. you know. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to basically say, okay, I know I got these positions, blah, blah, blah. I need to go focus in on – Get me a transfer here. Get me a recruit here. Blah blah blah. I mean, that's that's what's that's what's coming down with Ole Miss this year in the bowl. Yeah. Versus years past, we're reeling, we're hurt, holdouts. You mm-hmm. know, just we barely made it to the Sugar Bowl that year alive. Oh yeah. You and, know what I mean? It corral just, goes down. Yeah. It didn't first, even matter yeah. if we won or lost. We were yeah. just one of those years. Glad to be there. I think we would have won if he didn't got hurt. I mean, we we were oh, yeah. played our butt off against Baylor, but they wanted to win that game too. We were there. Yep. As when Kiffin came out with, with my hoodie on, I couldn't believe it. I gave everybody COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all came on with COVID. Yeah. yeah I think it was 28 of New us. Orleans I mean, COVID. The spreader. <laughs> the super spreader. <laughs> call it the super spreader. Uh, <laughs> that was a good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for a little while. And then Baylor was good, you know. Uh, but anyway, you know, I, I kind of have us going to um, – Citrus Bowl, mm-hmm. yeah, Orlando. Orlando. That's probably where we're going to wind up. I just yeah. don't see any way around it because Mizzou's obviously ahead of us, so they're cotton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Bama's going to probably end up in the sugar. And Miz- Missouri deserves it. I mean, that running back. I mean, we can't beat Missouri if we dude. played them right now. I, I mean, I hate to admit that. But yeah, they're just on. They're 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 ginning. Yeah, they got some seniors. That coaches got them going, like you said, and they're just they're just good at all the main things. Yeah. You're the only, the only one. You know that they have ahead of us that you know that I don't really agree with is is Penn State. Yeah, Penn State's you know. a joke. Yeah, they should be behind us, and Oklahoma should be in front of us. I think. Yeah, I didn't think Oklahoma should be in front of us at the one loss stage earlier this year mm-hmm. because they had the bad loss, and yeah. we had had a good loss. But just the way they're playing, the amount of points they're putting up, but now you got their little. They lost their coach. They're you know. Chumlins, their quarterback may go. You don't know what's about to happen up in there. Yeah. Because the de- Venable's a defensive guy. Most of these transfers are looking to transfer offensive side of the ball so they can get those numbers. And Levy may pull some people. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's just go on and start talking about that. I mean, that that that's – they got a good guy. Yeah. I know there's a lot of questions. I'm just talking about Jeff Levy and Mississippi State's hire. And I've uh, – I mean, in my opinion, I think it's a great hire. I do I, too. I, uh, I like him. Uh, uh, what I got, I got to uh, hang out with his buddies. Were you with me? I, I can't remember if it was you, 
But we sat and went to the Ole Miss game, and we were sitting in Coleman's seats. And he said, now, look, Jeff Levy. Yeah, we sat next to his family. It was Not his family. No, no, this was his boys. Oh, from Oklahoma. Yeah, yes. his buddies. He said, hey, hey, make sure and don't talk shit with you when he, gets, <laughs> when he makes a bad play call. You yeah. got you to ease up. But we got up there, and, man, we had a time. They we were did. They were so fun, and uh, I was like, man, if this, his boys are like this, and, uh, you know, I, I imagine he, he mm-hmm. fits right in there with him. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, he, he goes to Oklahoma uh, after Ole Miss. He comes, he goes, let's see, starts off. He was going to play at Oklahoma yeah. out of high school. Yep. Gets injured. Yeah. And not sure kind of what he did. And then he goes to um, he Baylor. Goes to Baylor. He's a Browse disciple, yep. man. He came from that Art Browse. I mean, they ran, ran and gun, man. Yep. Run and gun at Baylor. We're scoring 50 points a game every year. I mean, mm-hmm. they were so good with him. I mean, yeah. that, that Browse tree's got some, some good coaches Coach. come out of it. I know they ended up having all that controversy there with everything that went down, but yeah. that still doesn't mean all those guys can't coach. You, they're involved in a lot of programs. Mm-hmm. And then he goes down to Florida. I think he went to like a high school, some like big, I can't remember. And he did really good. Then he goes to UCF, uh, Central Florida. And, you know, I think I saw some stats. Look, you know, really good. And then he comes over to Ole Miss, goes to Oklahoma, and, you know, now State. I mean, he's 39 years old, and I think he understands. I mean, he's been under some good coaches, he's been under Lane. And, you know, he's been in Oklahoma. I think, like uh, Golding said, I think he understands the uh, um, portal. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's young, fiery, and he's an offensive guy. He I, checks so, all the boxes for me. You got to go yep. young. They needed to go offensive. And he needed somebody that understood the Mississippi rivalry. Yeah. Which that's huge. He was at Ole Miss. Now yeah. he's got that little beef back. Oh, Him and Kiffin, Kiffin's gonna have fun with each oh, other been now. Tweet, buddies. Kiffin's been tweeting already. You know, Kiffin, yeah. Kiffin knew how good he was. Yeah. I mean, you remember we sat there and said it with Coleman whenever we thought Kiffin was gone to LSU or Zerion, then we thought he was gone to Auburn. We were like, that's fine. We'll take Levy. But yeah. then Levy jetted on us to Oklahoma, and then we really been sitting here wigging since then because mm-hmm. I think they could have slid him straight in. I'd been fine with that. Yeah. You yeah. know. He's he's an offensive guru, yeah, I so think, I think he's gonna, he's going to call the plays. He already said he's calling the plays. He's going to bring in some he's keeping knocks, I think, and then he's got an offensive coordinator that's going to run practice and stuff, and then he's probably going to be searching for a defensive guy to kind of just take that side of the ball. He's probably not going to have a lot to do with it. Yeah, and man, I think it's he's scary. Going to get him a quarterback in there. It's scary for Ole Miss, and but it's good for the state. Yeah. I, I, I like think he said, turned them around quick. I like it when when both both universities are doing good. Mm-hmm. Just just more fun that way. Yeah. It, it, you got it, young, energetic guys at both spots now. Yep. So, and the basketball's turning around at both spots. Baseball's good in both spots. I mean, they're both in pr- primo spots. Yep. You know. Mississippi, you know, it's, for having two SEC teams, we do pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I think, you know, good hire and – um uh we'll see we'll see we'll see what happens and uh what's um i want to do some uh predictions i'm gonna jump right in for these conference championships yeah and that kind of you know you can play off that how you want we got uh the the biggest one to me sec championship it's gonna be the best one because it's gonna be the most competitive and that is georgia versus alabama we're going to atlanta and georgia Opened up minus five, and it's six. now it's a six. And then I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk about you know kind of the games. And then you got what I'm in lead into what I'm gonna do. So we got Georgia Alabama at six. You got Washington versus Oregon, and that's the one we're saying is crazy. Oregon minus nine. All right, and then Texas playing Oklahoma State. And Texas is – What is that number? What is that number? Because I got my, my prediction right here. Um, 14 and a half. Damn, I thought I'd be higher than that. Yeah, 14 and a half. So, 
Oklahoma State historically always plays so good as an underdog, though. Yeah, I mean they're they're good. I mean, you, when you look at I for mean, them to beat Oklahoma this year in the last bedlam with Oklahoma having so much on the line, just goes to show you how good that coach is and how they're just there's such a culture there, man. Yeah. They got they love that underdog role, that little brother, that Oklahoma. They're always under Oklahoma and Texas. And they've been more successful than both of them, or just way more successful than Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're right there with Oklahoma in the Big 12 for the last 10, 15 years since Gundy's been there. Man, they're always up in the mix. One, two losses and playing for in big games. So it, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm sitting here I and I'm just doing trend all line. my. I mean, I've looked at these games a hundred times. I've looked at the schedule, look at the stats, I've looked at the injuries, you know, looked at the trends. And. And I do this a lot. I'm like, man, something's not right. Why mm -hmm. are these lines like this? And, yep. you know, the dogs were howling uh, in college. Now, the NFL, that's a different story this week. It's, yeah. I think they broke All a record. record. Yeah, and with favorites. favorites to cover. So, and I'm like, man, are, they, are these going to be blowout games? Are they really going to be blowout games? You know, because that's, that's not – you got to be to cover these lines. Yeah. So, I'll just like – I said, all right, here's my prediction. And, you know, I, I won my prediction last week. And I'm going to talk about it after my, <laughs> I give my prediction. So, my prediction this week, I'm not going to do my parlay. I'm going to do a three-game, ten-point teaser. Okay. And I'm I going – I love that bet. I'm going up. Going, going up. up. I'm taking Bama plus 16. Oh, we're wrong sheet. I'm taking Oklahoma State plus 24 and a half. And I'm taking Washington plus 20. That's great value. I mean, I got 20 points with Washington, 24 and a half points with Oklahoma State, and 15 points with Bama in all conference championship games. And every team's going to be playing, you know. I looked at Oklahoma, there's no injuries. Uh, Bama's going to be playing. You know they're going to be playing hard. Now, that one would be the one I could think, if it got ugly, Georgia could blow them out. But the other, other, I mean, twenty points. I mean, yeah, just, but just, dude, the number coming out at four and a half has to scream at you from being a smart professional gambler like you are. Yeah, like it's gonna be eight if they're gonna blow them out. Yeah. Okay. So that leads into my prediction. All right. You good on yours? Yep. Okay. I, I made my mind up after last week. Remember I said it, nobody wins on Thanksgiving, nightmare, save up. Talked about it two weeks ago. Here I come, two-unit play. I go ride the four-wheeler out when it's 24-14. Think, think I got a winner. Hell, I got them on the wire, too. I come back, Louisville loses the game. Okay. And the other ones go one and one. Mm -hmm. And then we see the article where Vegas has the worst weekend in the history. I started laughing. I said, even the bookies didn't win. Yeah. The players and the bookies <laughs> lost. When I say nobody can win on Thanksgiving, <laughs> there you go. Because yeah. I don't know anybody that won gambling. And now Las Vegas is saying they had their worst <laughs> weekend in the history. Yeah. It's just – that's how that week goes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's miserable. I never won on Thanksgiving in my whole life. And I usually get killed more when I win the first game of the week. Mm -hmm. And this week, I just went in just gun-shy. I mean, so I'm coming into this week, I'm slugging. I'm pulling a boss. I made my mind up pre-deal. Pre I said, okay, I'm picking me. I may even grab the wire. I'm not spreading it. I want one chunk, and I'm loading. Gotcha. And I was dead set that I was going to go Georgia money line. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, then it comes out at five or four and a half. And I'm like, man, why is it so low? Yeah. And then I start to dig because I'm like, there's no value in either side here. You, there's really not a lot of value in Bama, definitely no value in Georgia, giving up more than a field goal here. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the total. The number one line in college football, we talked about earlier this year, 56. The yeah. best under number you can look for is 55, and that yeah. sucker is sitting straight on 55. The, these games flown over. All their totals have been down in like the 40s. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden it's like a 10-point higher total. Everybody's on the over, like over 80%. Mm -hmm. Just jumping. They're just thinking, oh, four touchdowns apiece because Georgia's been scoring. Like there's an offensive team this year. That's right. You know, we watched them live. Man, their quarterback mm -hmm. is so underrated. They got freaking weapons everywhere. They ain't even thinking about trying to 
grind, grind, run the game up the middle. They're like Alabama was when they went through that run, when they stopped running the ball, and they're like, we're opening up two of their spread, and Kiffin started it. And now I feel like Georgia's moved more into that. That's how smart Kirby is. He built it with the grind, just kill you up front. Now he's brought in so many athletes. He knows I'm just give it to all these studs everywhere now. Mm -hmm. We're going to score 40 points. We can't lose. I love the under. Love the under. I feel well, like with that line being low, yep. it's screaming. It's probably going to be a close game. If it ends up being a Georgia cover, I think it's going to be where Alabama doesn't score a lot. Because as I started digging into the the players, I was like, man, is, where's Alabama's weapons? They got, the, they got Burton. They don't really have a good running game. Their only weapons, the quarterback, his ability to run and throw deep. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Georgia proved against Ole Miss, you can't throw deep on them. They got two good of corners. Their safeties can freaking cover so much ground, it's scary. They can run. We didn't get a pass on them. One pass over yeah. 10 yards. And you saw us against A&M, we were opening up. It was because there's clearly something there. They got the number one pass defense in the country. You go look at it. Mm -hmm. So – I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, how's Alabama going to consistently move the ball on them with just Milrow? You know, they're going to they're gonna take away Burton just like they took away Harris. Alabama's kind of built like Ole Miss in that mm -hmm. respect. They got a stud receiver. The other ones are really good, but they only got one real, you know, game breaker, mm -hmm. Burton. I mean, he's unbelievable. But I just feel like Georgia can kind of offset him. And then from the Alabama side – you know they don't want to shoot out. Yeah, Their no defense doubt. is their strength. They have come back and won every game in the second half this year. They don't care about being behind. They're kind of like Ole Miss in that regard. They've been winning all these games. It looked like they're going to lose. I mean, even last week. Yeah. They're like sitting there like not one time have they been like, we got lucky. Like they, they're straight up like, we practiced that. Yeah. We won. We I, won. I swear, I promise you, I was sitting in the 19th hole in Clarksdale and – with some buddies watching the end of that game and I had a nice you know my oh, bet yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a nice bet on my parlay mm -hmm. you know and I really I swear I wasn't nervous I know you weren't I you text were texting it you were saying it <laughs> it's like you know, like, uh, like Rodney you know this ain't looking good and I'm like I'm, saying, I'm not nervous then he and fumbles even, the punt yeah the, even when they I got thought that was, I thought that was you know was over but then you know Snaps it over his head, and and uh, even on fourth down, I mean, I swear I was like, you know, I hate it for, for freeze, man. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it, you know, that I almost wish I didn't have the bet, which, you know, I like money. But because, I, I mean, I like freeze so much, man. And the fact that he had Alabama beat yeah, with that team just shows how unbelievable of a coach he is man and i don't i don't care i get i mean they were tied they just, with georgia in the third quarter yeah look I mean, at what those two teams did to us this year and we were way better in auburn we killed them at auburn yeah and he just knows how to coach he, he's so good man yeah he's so good and i don't care what i'll argue with anybody who wants to and, argue and, and he and didn't call the prevent so. prevent defense he said he likes the call he's just backing his guy yeah it's, a, it's stupid yeah I, hate, I, hate. I mean we how many times we watched it we, we complain, we complain, we complain. How in the hell do you rush two? Yeah. There's nothing that makes sense about it. We talked about it. I want to have somebody on. I want to be told. I want to yeah. argue with somebody. Because there's no way that anybody can tell me to my face that when a guy's got a guy blitzing him and he's got to make a split to six, second decision, he's going to do one of two things. He's going to run yep. or he's going to throw it quick. Yep. Ain't nobody saying, oh, my God, I'm about to get killed. I need to throw it as far as I can right now. That You don't think that way. There's no way. I've never seen that shit happen. The only quarterbacks I've ever seen do that shit is Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, and Tom Brady. Yeah, They're like, okay, they're bringing zero blitz. Or Eli Manning in that Super Bowl. He knew they were bringing zero blitz because, go look, Bill Belichick, who's the best defensive mind ever, they, they have two calls when the team gets in the red zone. They freaking – bring the house every play and make you make a decision and Eli knew that on that play to Plaxico they brought zero blitz he did a double move and hit him on that fade but he was throwing that fadeaway jumper but that was mm -hmm. from the 20 
Yeah. You know, this that was a little bit still not that far of a pass. But I mean, dude, you what are they doing? I don't know. And, man. and look, in this this week we had Minnesota. You know, our buddies had huge bet the other night on Minnesota, and we got to see pre, there's such things prevent offense too. Mm-hmm. It's like you just go out there with four minutes to go, and they're like, "Oh, it's going to give them the ball back." Why the hell would you do that? It's no different than playing prevent defense. There's prevent offense too. Yeah, you know, you one to. first down game's over. Why would you just run, 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 and then put it on one passing play? Why don't you just be like, dude, I'm going to throw it three times and get three, four. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, and if they do score, now I got more time. Yeah, because yeah, there's now, certain situations like that. Now with football, man, as good as these quarterbacks are and as good as these offenses are, especially in college with it stopping on first down, like you don't need more than 50 seconds to go the whole field. Mm-hmm. So for them to be like, oh, we're going to give it to them with a minute and a half instead of three minutes. Shit, man, that don't it, they don't need more than 50 seconds. Yeah. And in the NFL, same way, because they know how to get out of bounds. Those quarterbacks know. They got all that stuff detailed. They're unbelievable. There's so many fourth-quarter comebacks and last-minute drives in the NFL every week you see it. You can't give them the ball back or you're going to lose, mm-hmm. you know? Uh-oh. 50 seconds left. It just, just came into my head this year, earlier this year. I bet Colorado State mm-hmm. to beat Colorado, all right, now they were like a twenty. This twenty four point one hundred dollars. dollars. Yeah, all right. I bet them to to win the game. All right, in between, they were going to win the game by five to nine points, mm-hmm. and it was plus. Um, I think plus. It was thirty five to one. I put it. I put a dime on it. Came back thirty five thousand, and Colorado. Had to go 98 yards in 50 seconds. They were down by eight, mm-hmm. and boom, boom, go down and score. Get the get the two point conversion, win the game. I mean, but it just it just made me kind of remember how you know 50 seconds you go the whole length of the field. Yeah, you know if you got you know a pretty decent team and yeah because so, everybody's proven on the defensive side they're going back up. They're going back up, no doubt, and that's exactly what Colorado State did. I mean, they just let them go right down the field. Yeah. And and it's – it's all right. We're getting a defensive coach on here. That's – all right, we promise y'all. I don't care who it is. I will make that happen. Yeah. And and um, I, he's going to just give us his – and we might – we're probably – 100% we're going to learn something. No doubt. You know, but we just want to – we, we got to know. I've been wanting to know for so long and probably a lot of gamblers and, you know – want to know because it's the, one of the main things we talk about you know because it might be the prevent defense that lets them march down the field not to win the game but to cover now and there are some situations where yes you can do that if you're up more but yeah. we've seen them do it when they might be up nine ten and let them march down where there's still enough time and then they end up getting the ball back and get the last minute field goal and tie the game. But that prevent defense is just there's got to be a better way. Yeah, there's got to be. I a mean, better the flip way. side I could see on that argument is, is if you consistently show on film that you're just bringing the house in that situation mm-hmm. every time, and that coach has that tendency, and then that offensive guy on the other side is like, we know this guy's about to be blitzing, you know, let's hit him with the deep ball. Yeah. You know, but then to me, that's when you can say, okay, now you can drop every now and then and, you know, show your pushing up and then drop back. Then you can disguise it better. Yeah. You know, I just think they overthink it. Yeah. And and the fact that the guy can get on get one and one in the in the corner right there with that many people in the end zone, like well, what are you doing? No kidding. Like it just whatever. Unforgivable. Yeah. I can't believe that's the out of every game I've ever bet. That's probably the the luckiest win I've ever had. Oh, man. you know, <laughs> that's unbelievable, man. <laughs> but uh, hey, that's the way it's going. I only got one loss this year, and that was I forced one in just a regular old play. I forced it. I'm not gonna force it anymore. This teaser right here is gonna win. Yeah, I it's like that win. teaser. Uh, if it doesn't, I, I I think maybe maybe I'm wrong, and Oregon does just blow them out. You know, like they think. 
but I mean, no, nah, yeah. the Oregon's not going to cover by much if they cover. Yeah, Washington's still pretty good, man. Yeah, I just think that that's just a, a one of those dummy numbers. They don't want to get hammered with Oregon action like we talked about. They're trying to get the fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously they're going to probably take in more Washington money, but then they're just thinking to themselves, okay, if we're going to get stuck with anybody, I'd rather get stuck with Oregon here. I That's think right. I don't think there's anybody that thinks Washington's going to win that game. Yeah, we'll see. That's the fun part about it, you know. Is these uh, should be be some good games and be some uh, maybe some upsets, maybe some blowouts. We don't know, but this is a good week of college football, a good week of betting. And we were almost going to go to Vegas, me and uh, me and Bryz and Pop. We were talking about it last mm-hmm. night because. Um, and because it's a fun time to go out there oh, in, yeah. in these games and. Um, so, but I think we changed our mind. We were going to go play some golf, and I think we changed our mind. I think we were going to go to the basketball game. Uh, I mean. Hotty toddy yeah, last night with a big win over NC State. We dominated. Yep, dominated. Good. Beard is, is – is, he's got it going on, man. Yep. He's a winner. We said it. Yep. He's a winner. The Tay, the, the students are showing up. It sounded loud in there. Um, I'm ready to get in there and, uh, you know, watch him. Yeah, he's he's fiery. I mean, I just I just like a fiery coach. Just like you showing me that uh, before we started this, that uh, Kirby. Yeah. I mean, God, Good man, God. give me that for it. I want to eat. <laughs> I want to eat. I mean, just going I want crazy. To eat. Yeah, I mean, that just just I love that, and you know, I see that in Beard, man. I mean, he's going crazy with him after these wins, and he's he knows basketball. And like I said, I don't. I, I, that's, that's one sport. I love it. Played and I played it, but you know. I don't – the schemes and everything like that and what players, but it seems like he's got a good group of kids and and guys that uh, – We're very long. Yes. Our guards are big. We got two lefties, which is harder to guard. It's different. Mm-hmm. You got to play defense against yep. the way they slash. We're just lanky. I think we're going to be better and better defensively. We started getting sloppy on the offense. They started getting a lot of offensive rebounds against us last night, but we got ahead early and they tried to make the game sloppy because NC State's, you know, biggest thing they do is they turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. We only had two turnovers in the first half, which NC State's turning over like 17, 18 times a game, you know, the team they're playing. Yeah. And so they start full court pressing. They started speeding the game up more. They started spreading the ball out and it, you know, they started getting some rebounds and got back in the game. But we were rebounding good when it was a slower pace. We need to get our big guy back. Yeah. Big time. Well, we're going to uh, start getting in that basketball, you know, once this football is over with. And uh, and one thing I want to talk about before we go is we got the new website. I got, you know, back on track and uh, – Boys in the sip store.com. And we're, we got, we're starting to get organized and getting our inventory. We got it going and our system. So when you order now, starting, starting after this week, we got a lot of orders out yesterday that people did during our, uh, our, Black uh, Friday. Black Friday and Cyber, uh, Monday. We got a big shipment of inventory coming in at the end of this week. And so, now when you order because i know for christmas time y'all want these you know you, you want them and we're we're going to be able to get it to you within you know one to three days mm-hmm. now if it says pre-sale but beside it in the store that's something that we just came out with you know uh we've got a new state thing um with levy um uh swag is state something he said and then we got the SIP State, you know, those are pre-sales. I got some basketball stuff coming out. It's going to be pre-sale, all right? We, and we're going to, you know, that's just where we're going to put it on there. And, you know, you can buy it, and then we'll we'll make it. And that's usually, now we probably get it, you know, three, four weeks. So mm-hmm. if you see pre-sale, just expect that. Our first little run that we did earlier this year, me and Will, you know, we we joined up together and – we we're trying to iron some things out, and some some stuff, you know, took a little little longer. And but I'll tell you something about me and Will. If we if you don't get something, or something happens, I promise you, we will take care of it and 
give you way more. I'm sure just people how we have are. noticed they've been getting all kinds of yeah. extra hats and gifts in these in some of these packages. And yeah, I've sent an extra hat. I've we've we've we will make it right. Yeah, you yeah. just message us just and like everybody has. We've all we respond. We'll and, tell you what's going on. And be on the lookout for pop-ups between now and Christmas. We're yep. going gonna to get in a few locations. We'll post. And clearance sales, I'm going to do some of those. Uh, we got some stuff that, you know, uh, we've done in the past. We got some stuff that we might not quite as liked as much. Um, and we're going to put it on clearance uh, and all that. And, you know, feel free to... Uh, I'm a better if you call me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm emails or a text. Uh, I do. I, I'm better, but you can if you got a question or whatever. Because um, I got so many uh, on Facebook, and you know, that's one thing we got to cl get cleaned up too. And we're we're working on that, getting our store, you know, and away from you know a personal page and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, just kind of wanted to give y'all a little update on that store because it's Christmas time, and we'll we'll do some some. Some more sales and stuff. Uh, everybody, I hope y'all enjoyed the free shipping over $50. <laughs> <laughs> I told Willis, man, the shipping's, where's the shipping? I know I put the setting on there. And uh, I went and looked, and for some reason, Shopify has a, uh automatic setting of $50. Everything over $50 is free shipping. And I said, well, dang. The hoodie's over fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I went. I was like, "Man, we go. well, y'all enjoy the free shipping. We like to give stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. away." <laughs> but we got that changed, and we're gonna do. I, I got it at two hundred dollars free shipping. We might change that down a little bit. I'll talk to Will about it. Uh, but anyway, and um, that's kind of where we are, and we got to get ready to go play this golf match. It's on. It's on. We're gonna give y'all an update uh, next week, and. Um, we're going to have a good time. This was, you know, this show, we just really wanted to talk about the bowls, conference championships, you know, uh, and, and kind of what our opinion. And we got some, uh, we got some really good things coming up. Yeah. Uh, Christmas, you know, we got Christmas coming up, so it'll probably, we might, we got a potential guest before Christmas, but if not, y'all better get ready for next year because we've got some things lined up. And we do got our so, first charity that yep. we're meeting with this week, and we'll post who that is. We're not going to say any names yet. We get some things ironed out. We'll post the check, how much yep. we give them, everything that's sold since our last episode when we that's said right. we were going to do this. We've kept up with the amount of items. We'll post it, give it a dollar value, write a check, and yep. we'll keep moving forward. So just keep sending us charities and let us know who y'all want to give back that's to. That's right. And any content. Y'all got some funny content that's in the Mississippi or Ole Miss, you know, send it. Send it, and we'll post it. Like one of the funniest posts, and I said most engaged posts was on the video that guy at the Georgia game. <laughs> dancing. I mean, they were dancing. He was having time. I mean, that thing was shared and viewed and all that. So we need, you know, some good content like that. But anyway, uh, good Thanksgiving week, good Egg Bowl win. We got a lot of good football, a lot of different scenarios. Um Let's uh, let's end the year on a good bowl win, and let's go uh, under fifty five in the Georgia Alabama game. Get it before it starts dropping. There we go. There we go. All right, let's go beat some ass on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs>